What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Forge. I'm Vulcan and today we are looking at some more Wilson Builds gameplay. So today what do we have in store? Well, we have the Maleficent build which is a portion of the Arcanist build tree. And I say that, um, but you can actually just move this outer ring to wherever you need to go. So it doesn't really matter, but this is the path I chose. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the spec. Jumping in, we got the Arcanist. That's your first step, right? Gives you this nice little active skill called the Spellbinder. In passive mode, it increases your Umbra regeneration and your resistance against spells. So good times there. When you use that spell, you actually enter an active mode and gain a temporary spell damage boost instead. So it's a damage cooldown when you use it, when you are leaving it in passive mode and just letting it be itself, then it's actually gonna give you some more Umbra. So great times. Now, like, it, like in the last video, I'm not necessarily gonna go through and hit all of these little specs here, but I'm gonna go through some of the bigger ones. So this one's nice, um, especially in this build, you're gonna take so much damage. Um, you're a glass cannon, so having this where your radius of globe pickup near death is improved by 50%, that's phenomenal, so go team there. Then you also have reduces all active spells by 0.4 seconds each time you pick up a globe. So picking up globes is gonna become part of a priority system for you if you run this build. Now in the center, we have Volatile Nature, which plus 8% to physical resistance when your Umbra is empty, plus 8% to spell damage your Umbra is full. So you're gonna gain something depending on where you are at. Now, keep in mind, this is empty and full. So if you're absolutely full, but you drop to 99%, you're gonna lose that spell damage. So your first cast is going to give you that nice bump. And then when you get to the empty, until your regeneration kicks on, you're gonna have that, but that's typically gonna be pretty quick. Um, you don't wanna be at an Umbra uh, when you're especially a spellcaster. Now moving on to the other one, we got Magical Affinity, right? Plus 20% to Umbra regeneration uh, if your Umbra is empty. So you're gonna gain quite a few different benefits and bonuses when your Umbra runs out. And then you get that nice plus three to willpower there. Over here, we got Battle Ready, which is plus 6% spell damage if your Umbra is full. So what you're gonna be, what does that say? Okay. So if you're you're gonna basically gonna be getting things depending on where what state you're in. And that's just how the Arcanist kind of works. It just it almost works like a pendulum. When you're full, you get something. When you're empty, you get something. Anywhere in between, you're doing damage, so you don't really get anything. Now moving into the Maleficent tree. The Maleficent tree is all about ailments. If you guys have ever played Affliction Warlock in World of Warcraft, kind of the same thing. It's gonna be poison, it's gonna be dealing with corpses, it's going to be throwing out shadow magic, so let's deal with it. Now, this is the only tree that I've seen that unlocks something other than the um, assassin tree, or the gladiator tree, I'm sorry, and that is Slave to Darkness, which unlocks a Nightcrawler for you. It launches a living projectile forward that deals shadow damage on impact. Along the way, it'll consume corpses, increase the power of its final explosion. Extremely situational from what I've seen, and we'll see that in some gameplay later. And then we have Contagion, which actually gives you a nice AOE effect of straight up poison, uh, but it continuously ticks down your Umbra. This thing is very costly, and you don't really get a ton of damage out of it. Um, like I said, you'll see that later, but they're phenomenal, phenomenal abilities. I really like the mechanics, and I think they're gonna turn into something really nice when we can actually tune them. In the center here, we have corpses now keep a trace of the status ailments. So if you kill something with fire, then it's gonna be a burning pit of corpses. If you kill it with poison, it's gonna be a nice poison pit laying there. Uh, for anybody that walks through it and it gets poisoned and they're walking around disease and they're little like ticking time bombs for you. Then um, also everything in here is about umbra damage in this particular ring. So it's always gonna be increases umbra damage, increased shadow damage. Um, this one's pretty nice. Physical damage you inflict is converted to toxic. So if you switch like a sword build and you're trying to go for a hybrid, that's nice there. But this one's pretty nice. If you dash, it actually leaves a poison trail in, in your path. So if you're running away from something, you can leave traps, um, essentially. And if they die, then they once again get those status ailments. So let's pop over and let's take a look at my actual build. So what we're working with here is a hand forged lightning staff. Um, I was gonna go with uh, Umbra Staff, but they didn't really have as much damage. So I went ahead and socketed this one out. Three sockets, super nice. Plus 13% to all spell damage, so here we go. I got my Mage Hood. Now it does have that plus 23% to agility, but we got quite a few other things in there that's gonna really kind of push, push me over the edge. All right, 
from a spec standpoint, we are solid, 100% invested in willpower. And my oh my, we are excellent all the way up. We got some great modifiers here, so we should be able to put out some decent damage. Now, taking a look at my actual abilities, we're working with the Gaze of Atama, which is essentially a powerful beam that you just shoot right out of your hand. You have to hold it to maintain it, and it's uh, 17 umber cost for each second that you're holding it. Contagion, this is that AoE I was telling you about, creates a toxic aura, which then depletes your umbra continuously. Um, the umbra upkeep cost, you can see there, is 90 per second, and it is quite costly. But the nice thing is I can spec into um, making it cost a little bit less down the road. So we've got Disruption, plants a trap on the ground. This is a shadow trap, and it'll actually explode after a decent delay, I would say maybe two seconds. And uh, yes, yeah, so there's activation delay, three seconds. And it'll do uh, an okay amount of damage, but it has a nice modifier on it, so I think it'll be all right. We also have Umbral Blast. This pushes everybody back. Um, has a long cooldown of 16 seconds, but that's okay. It just really is kind of an emergency get out of jail free card. And then we have our passive ability we covered with our Spellbinder. Over here, Nightcrawler, 170 Umber cost. And this is the one I was telling you about that consumes corpses as you shoot it. Uh, very situational, and you can absorb up to five corpses. So it's, it's okay. Um, not entirely crazy about it, but we'll see that in some gameplay later. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and let's jump into some dungeons and see what we are working with. All right, guys, so we jumped into this randomized dungeon. This is something that you get to take care of once you get through the entire campaign. And, well, I shouldn't say that. It's up to where the alpha stops. They put these randomized dungeons in here, and as you kind of progress further and further, deeper and deeper into the dungeon itself, things start to become more and more difficult. Your enemies start to become all blue names, all yellow names, all red names, and things get pretty tough. On my Arrow Rain build, I was able to get down to... I think it was like depths like 18 um, to 19 and it was pretty fun you know rolling through just doing stuff it was with a level 9 crossbow by the way but this build I'm struggling guys I'm struggling with the Maleficent build there are some things that I really need to kind of figure out whether it's a tuning problem whether it's a gearing problem or whether it's just I mean this spec isn't built out 100% yet or fully yet now I know that's the case in some things obviously there's passive abilities that aren't in the game but for the most part I feel like there's a severe kind of damage disconnect and then you're obviously a glass cannon because you're a mage but you don't have any rage using abilities and I think that's a severe kind of oversight I don't know if it's by the development team or those kind of abilities just are not in the game yet but if you notice as I'm going through this I'm burning through Umbra quite quickly which is fine I mean that's your spell resource but there's no rage consuming abilities that will allow me to kick off my Umbra regeneration so I really have to rely on my spellbinder passive uh, globes that drop and a lot of rolling and a lot of waiting to get those things back up and running. Now, what I'm really hoping that they come out with, Wilson, is just give us just give us a rage ability. Maybe it's a combination of a, you know, a magic melee hit or um, some sort of pet you can summon if you burn through your rage. Like a Maleficent build would be perfect for using a corpse to summon uh, a minion that can roll through and do stuff. And maybe that's plans for down the road. I'm not entirely sure. But as you can see right here, it's taken me quite a while to burn through this yellow or this blue name because I'm completely out of Umbra. My rage is capped, which is great, but I don't have anything to use. I don't have any sort of, you know, uh, consumption abilities. It's all just me sitting and waiting. So that's one of the big things I had an issue with for the magic user uh, in relation to the arrow rain build that I put together. Now it's fun to play. I will give you that. And it is certainly flashy. It is really flashy. The animations are just top notch on this thing, especially with the lightning staff. So cool. But I started running into big problems when I got past common level enemies. So common level enemies are okay. I mean, you can burn through them pretty quick, as you can see here, uh, using my different abilities. But when you start getting to the blue name Pythis, to the red name Ghouls, and things like that, especially if they have certain modifiers on them, it becomes incredibly, incredibly difficult. So at this point, guys, 
I would not recommend going with a pure magic build unless you are absolutely 100% specced for it and unless you're willing to put up with a little bit of, I'll say, um, finagling when it comes to messing with your build, trying to figure out what abilities you need to use, what exact perks and passives you need to use. Now, I get it. I don't have a 100% optimized setup here, but at the same time, I can notice a severe, severe disconnect and a drop off in damage output between my crossbow build and this magic build. Now, I end up dying in this take right here and going back to town and switching over and creating a hybrid build of a sword and shield kind of battle mage, which we'll hop into one second. So let's go ahead and flip over to that. So I die, I jump back to Amarath and I jump in and start immediately grabbing some different things. So I noticed right out of the gate, like I mentioned, I didn't have any rage abilities. So let's go ahead and let's get some melee rage abilities in here. We'll start kind of weaving some magic together with our melee, go through, we'll change our specs, we'll make them so they're a little more, I'll say balanced between ferocity and uh, willpower, which will give us a little bit of a bump in a few, few areas that we really need. And plus there's so many other frost abilities and electric abilities and fire abilities than just going with straight umbra which in my opinion is going to be a little bit better um, the umbra abilities aren't fully as a all there but fire and frost seem to be in a pretty good spot right now so i end up going for frost and using those i've seen a few builds out there that do decent if you're really specced for it but i want to create almost like a battle mage right a sword and a shield um, being able to throw out magic and being able to take down bigger creatures and things like that would be pretty cool and so i was like well you know what let's just do a, let's just do a straight up just weave and we'll just see what happens so getting through going through all my specs as you can see i'm throwing a bunch of frost things on there i throw a little bit of fire um want to make sure that i have something that's going to be able to utilize my rage Originally, I threw that safeguard on there for uh, tanking, but I was like, you know what? How often am I actually going to use that? I'm trying to put out damage. Survivability isn't necessarily a big deal or a big issue with me at this point. So I end up taking it off my bars and putting Rain of Fire back on there. All right, so jumping into the actual dungeon itself. As you can see, things are going a little bit better. Um, it really kind of isn't the best, but capitalizing on those frost overkills which is something in that spec if you freeze an enemy then you have a way high chance to overkill them and shatter them it really kind of comes into play here it really shines during this build but something i'll notice is just my basic attacks are draining my umbra and that's something i noticed on a few of my abilities i don't know if that is intended if your umbra is intended to get burnt on your base abilities but it's something that is an issue that i ran into where you know i'm trying to use my umbra but basic attacking is taking my umbra so it's kind of a double-edged sword of well i don't want to attack because you know then i put myself for failure but at the same time i need to be able to attack to generate rage and other things so i don't know it's it's kind of a weird system outside of um, a few other builds that i've done and I'm not entirely sure if it's because it's coating my blade in frost and that's kind of what's going into it or if it's just, you know, something that exists. I'm not entirely sure if, I mean, it's alpha, so who knows, it could be anything at this point. But you can see I'm still kind of struggling with these uh, common, you know, large Pythus warriors and it's just that damage output. Now I know I'm rocking a sword and a shield, so I'm not expecting to put out just an incredible amount of damage, but at the same time, I was expecting just to have a little bit more control and magic abilities don't seem to do a ton of damage in this game comparatively to physical damage. So I think there's gonna need to be a tuning pass on those, but at least I was able to come back here and do some damage to this ghoul and end up uh, taking him down with me. So anyway guys, my final verdict on this one is I'm not too impressed with, uh, with the magic abilities in this game at this point. I think they need to be severely looked at when it comes to the amount of damage. I mean, I'm specced, I was crazy specced into willpower, still wasn't putting out the level of damage I needed to. And I think it could be part of gearing and gearing specifically for that. But still, even to that point, you know, there's a severe punishment for not being geared. I mean, it must be a, a big drop off right now. Honestly, chalk it up to Alpha. This is something that's still a big work in progress. I'm not holding it against the dev studio. I just think that at this point on this patch, that is not an entirely viable 
spec or build for diving into deep, deep dungeons and uh, pushing pushing leaderboards or anything like that. I would still recommend the Arrow Rain build over this one in particular. Anyway, guys, this has been Vulcan. Thank you for stopping by. Love you guys. I'm out of here. Thank you.